Hello and welcome back friends. In this video we'll talk about aspects of communication. We can also call them the essentials of the spoken communication. I have listed 17 aspects of spoken communication. Let's talk about them one by one. The first is choice of words. See when you speak it is very important for you to choose the right words. Not only right words but you also have to choose the right combinations of the words. It's very important to communicate the message that you intend to communicate. The second is tone of the voice. See, communication does not depend only on the choice of words because a single word may mean different things. If spoken in different situations and with the different kind of expressions. Therefore, the tone of your voice is also important because the tone of voice conveys your emotions, attitudes, confidence, enthusiasm, anger or empathy. These things are generally communicated by the tone of your voice. The third is volume. The sound, pitch of the sound of your voice should not be very high or very low. It needs to be moderate to make the communication effective. Next is pace and rate. It is generally said that you should not speak too fast or too slow. Your speed should be the moderate one so that the listeners can understand it properly. Next is clarity of pronunciation. It is seen that some people generally tend to speak very fast and when they speak very fast their pronunciations are not clear which in fact is a barrier in the communication. So the clarity of pronunciation is also very important in the communication or in fact in the effective communication. Accessibility is also one of the most important aspect of the communication. By accessibility it is meant that the listeners should have access to the words, phrases, combinations you are using. If they are not used to them then they will not understand. Nonverbal communication is also very important when you speak. In fact Nonverbal communication helps to enhance your verbal communication or the spoken communication. Nonverbal cues like body language, facial expressions, eye contact, gestures and postures carry the great importance in the spoken communication. One must remember that. Ninth is careful listening. Careful listening is also one of the most important aspects of spoken communication. Why is it so? Because if the speaker does not listen carefully, he or she would not be able to respond properly and that would be the failure of effective communication. Next important aspect of communication is adjustment. Adjustment means the speaker has to adjust according to the situation. If situation demands something else, the speaker should not keep on speaking what he intends to speak because that will not help in effective communication. In fact, that will create disastrous consequences for the speaker. So the next important aspect of spoken communication is cultural carefulness. Now, what is cultural carefulness? Cultural carefulness is the awareness about the culture of the listeners. One has to be really careful about the cultural connotations of the listeners because if you don't know the culture of a person, your communication won't be effective communication. Twelfth one is confidence. See, confidence is extremely important in spoken communication. Unless you are confident, you won't be able to communicate effectively. Now, what gives you the confidence? The knowledge, in fact, the knowledge of the language, the knowledge of the message, the clarity of the thought. All these things give you the confidence. And con Next is organizing the message. Generally, the speaker intends to give some message. Now, this message should not be scattered. It has to be organized properly. It has to be organized in a concise manner so that listeners would listen to it and get the clear idea about it. Another aspect is importance of aids. The speaker is free to use the aids, maybe visual aids, maybe audio aids. The postures and gestures are also important aspect of spoken communication because they also carry tremendous importance in the process of communication. The message is communicated through the postures and gestures of the speaker. The next one is respect for interruptions. 
See, it is likely possible that the speaker may get interrupted by the people, maybe the listeners. So the speaker should be respectful towards the interruption of the listeners. If they interrupt, speakers should listen to them in order to clear the idea or in order to solve the doubts in their minds. And the last one is pausing for reflection. When speaker speaks, speaker needs to pause for a while in order to reflect, in order to see how his speech, her speech is affecting the listeners, whether it is creating desired impact or not. That is also important. So now let's talk about misunderstanding in spoken communication. What brings in misunderstanding in the spoken communication? There are also points. Let's understand it one by one. Unknown tone. See, we are generally used to the tone of the speaker. If we listen to an unknown tone, it becomes difficult for us to understand. Second is ambiguous language. The speaker must be clear about the words and expressions he is using. The expression he uses, she uses, should not give two or multiple meanings. If it is done, then clarity of message would not be there. So language should be clear. No ambiguous language should be used. Cultural differences. It is likely possible that the meaning of one thing is different in one culture and meaning of the other thing is different in other culture. So cultural difference can be one of the greatest barriers of the communication. Next is jargon and excessive use of technical terms. See, it is seen that sometimes speakers tend to use the words which are not known to the people. They think that using such words will display their scholarly. But it is not so. Basic intention behind spoken communication is to communicate the message. If message is not communicated properly, it will be a miscommunication. Therefore, the speaker should always avoid the excessive use of jargon and technical terms. Next is use of extra figurative language. Extra figurative language means decorated language, using a lot of figures of speech in your language. If the speaker uses extra figurative language, a lot of figures of speech and decorated language, sometimes it becomes difficult for the listeners to understand the exact meaning of his words. Therefore, he should be careful not to use extra figurative language in his speech. Another one is noise and distraction. So noise and distraction means noise that comes from the outside or from the surrounding, certain other distractions like people moving around. These are also barriers to the communication. In fact, barriers to the spoken communication. Next one is assumption. Assumption is previous understanding about the things or ideas. Certain ideas are told to you previously and you have that notion in your mind. When another idea in a novel form is stated, it becomes difficult for the person to understand it because he has earlier idea in his mind. Then lack of context. See, every spoken communication is done in a particular context. If you don't know the context, it will be very difficult for you to understand the meaning of the sentence spoken because language is decided by the context in which it is spoken. Its meaning is decided by the context in which it is spoken. Next one is the pace of the speaker. Space means speed. The speaker needs to be extra careful about his speed. Some speakers tend to speak very fast. This space actually creates a problem for the listeners because they do not really understand what the speaker is saying. So speaker should not be too fast or too slow in his speech. Channels of communication are also important. Channel in the sense where you are speaking. If you are speaking directly, that is face to face, or if you are speaking on the YouTube channel, or if you are speaking on internet or phone, these are also important things. And these can also be the barriers of communication depending on the nature of the channel. Lack of attention can also be one of the barriers to the communication because communication is done properly when attention is paid by the listener as well as the speaker. The next one is bias. Bias in the sense prejudice about certain things. Sometimes we have prejudices about the people, the ideas, and that can also be the barrier to the spoken communication. And the last but not the least, lack of feedback. The speaker needs to have this feedback from the listeners so that he can understand whether he is communicating things properly or not. If there is no feedback, he'll keep on speaking, but that will not be an effective communication or in fact, that will be the miscommunication. I think you have understood aspects of spoken communication and barriers to the spoken communication. 
If you have liked this video, hit the like button, share this video with your friends and do not forget to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Thank you very much.